Hello and welcome to another edition of Livestream Insiders. I'm Peter Stewart, back from my vacation from London to New Zealand and also to Sydney as well. And uh, this is the episode which is airing on Sunday the 12th of November here uh, back in London and also with my co-host. Here is Krishna Day. Hi Krishna, welcome to you as well. Nice to see you again, although, you know, not in real life per se. It's great to have you back, Peter. But it's also been wonderful to have all those people with us that actually joined to actually take your kind of very big seat that has to be filled. But it was great to be able to deep dive into some content. But we've got lots of things coming up on the show this week. And thank you, everybody who's watching us here live, all those of you who are watching us on the replay. We really appreciate you being with us. And here on the live stream insiders, Peter and I have been together for more than two years now. And um, I think we've got a show coming up, Peter, that we have done for the last two years. It'll be our third time of doing it, which will be gifts for your live stream loved ones or even yourself. So we'll be doing something in a few weeks time around that. And Peter, you probably got some ideas from your vacation about things that you would either have found helpful or things that you actually saw other people use for live streaming. But in the show this week, we've got some interesting topics and we're going to be deep diving into some social video research. Um, but also we've got a very special exclusive offer for all of you who are here as part of Live Stream Insiders. It's a little conversation that I had with somebody who's or an organization but based in the UK who've launched a product. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about that product a little bit later on. But Peter, you might want to give us a, a kind of a quick overview of what did you do in terms of live content at all? Or were you just doing recorded content for your uh, adventures in terms of personally? But were you using any personal kind of streams of live content to keep in contact with the people that you'd left behind on your month-long vacation from the shores of the UK? Well, you know what? After uh, doing the uh, the book, the uh, live streaming handbook for the last uh, several months, and uh, in fact, I even had a, a few videos, excuse me, a few emails from the publishers while I was away, uh, just tidying up a few loose ends. What I decided to do was to actually concentrate not on live streaming or on video, uh, but actually to concentrate a bit more on some still pictures. So downloading a few uh, still photography apps and trying to work out how they work and trying to think much more about about angles and compositions and yes the rule of thirds but also um, looking at uh, looking at depth of field and things like that and as I say looking at angles and texture and when you've got some fantastic uh, things to work with I'm still trying to find uh, I still find it a little bit difficult to do the you know the big panoramas the uh, the big views the landscapes but when you've got some terrific uh, raw material to work with like the Sydney Opera House I mean, how about that for the different angles and the shapes and the big sky uh, and uh, the whole of Circular Quay and the whole of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and so on? Obviously, that gives a whole load of uh, of uh, scope to uh, to still photography, which, as I say, is something that I wanted to uh, to get into a little bit more. So coming up in uh, today's program, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, a, a new push, a new marketing push by YouTube. And also, uh, Krishna, forgive me if you've done this already, but I shall uh, notice uh, w whether uh, you, uh, you you have all done, uh, whether you have done it or not. And that's by John D. McHugh, uh, who's uh, written a really interesting article uh, from Verify Media about uh, when you are doing some live video, and you're also thinking about having that as recorded as well. How do you shoot live video when you're going to be repackaging it as a pre-recorded package for later on down the line? Something that's going to be particularly useful to something that I'm doing in my day-to-day uh, -day job, which I uh, get back to properly tomorrow after, oh, a month away. So that's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. And uh, also we're going to be starting off with this research, which Krishna hinted at a few moments ago uh, from Chibia, which uh, does dig deep quite a lot into uh, some of the facts and stats about what different 
different companies, what different individuals are doing uh, as far as their content goes. Because, of course, don't forget that uh, very often it is a matter of content and what people are thinking of, uh, of putting out there in their live video to try and engage people, to try and persuade people to, uh, to follow their channels and to buy their products. So this is the state of online video report, quarter three for 2017. They always come up with uh, such fantastic uh, facts and stats and just make you think a little bit more uh, what other people are doing, perhaps how you can uh, pivot yourself, how you can perhaps change things a little bit yourself. And also uh, maybe how you can steal a few ideas, not necessarily from exactly what they're talking about, because this is one of our big things here, of course, on live stream insiders, not necessarily to steal an idea wholesale which of course you can very often do but how perhaps you can pick and choose different ideas different formats different thought process thought processes different logistics and so on and uh, kind of put those into what you're already doing it gives you a little bit more depth it gives you a little bit more texture and control of the content that you've already decided to do in your particular niche and what they've come up with is some stats which I was particularly interested in of the kind of content that people are producing which has uh, really kind of um, gone on the up and up and that is food videos food videos and perhaps we can ask you to to share some ideas about why you think more and more people are doing food videos obviously they've been around for a long time it's the kind of content which often gets an awful lot of traction but on facebook itself the number of food videos up 30 percent uh, year on year and on um youtube up 140 percent so as i say wonder why you might think that is what is the content about food videos which actually engages people draws them in makes them watch and also makes them watch for longer as well now, i couldn't actually see um unless i've missed it krishna uh, whether people are watching food videos for longer but as i suspect they uh, they, they probably are um, so let's uh, have a look at some of those uh, videos down there. It's food and drink and then sports, uh, obviously sports. And if, uh, if it, uh, Krishna, we can keep that slide up for, uh, for a few moments. I think probably what it is with uh, with some of these is that uh, sports, you've always got an ongoing story. You've got something which is developing all of the time. You never know what is going to happen. You've got unscripted, unrehearsed content all of the time. Looking at people be, and blogs. It should be noted though, Peter, particularly in terms of this one, I was interested in this slide because one of the things we've talked about from time to time are around influencers. And um, in this particular case of this research, we're talking about branded content so we've talked about brand the branded feature which has been updated a couple of times during 2017 um, for facebook so if you're working alongside a partner let's say you're a brand and you're actually got an influencer or an individual or another brand working alongside you you actually identify that specifically as branded content so i think it should be pointed out specifically in this chart though that actually it's, uh, you know, if you're go, going to work with influencers, that isn't really a much of a surprise, is it, in terms of that food food and drink area particularly. And the other thing we should also just say, particularly if you're working with alcoholic beverages um, or any products that are going to reach a, a, a younger age group, you need to make sure you're compliant with Facebook guidelines and also your marketing guidelines in your own in your own country or the countries that you're serving. So um, I think it's quite interesting as we look at this research about that play with influencers as well. Absolutely, and of course, uh, Krishna, your your background is in, in is in food and drink distribution, isn't it? So uh, uh, that's where you're coming from on on that. If we can just have that slide up again, Krishna, so we can go through perhaps some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, and maybe Patricia and Stephen and Kimberly who are watching can uh, come up with uh, their suggestions about why some of these topics are working really well, particularly on video, particularly on live streaming video as well. And I think a lot of it is because you never 
never know what is going to happen. As I say, with something like sports or something like gaming, also in there we've got a lot of uh, a teaching and education uh, videos. So obviously it, it, it always stands to reason that people are going to want to, uh, to learn something either of you or something for themselves for their life. So for example, of you, then you can look at something like uh, news and politics. They want to know your views on something, your particular take, your particular spin. But coming back to things like music and dance, home and DIY, they're actually getting some information which is of use to them, which is uh, particularly useful for them. Um, also, I think it's really interesting because we hear so much about things like uh, beauty, health and fitness and, uh, and self-help, uh, some of these kind of uh, perhaps um, um, softer subjects, some of the, the softer content, but also we've got some harder stuff in there as well, the cars and the trucks and the racing and the gaming and things like that. Uh, and uh, as I say, also things like uh, like news and politics too, uh, and also some subjects where people can perhaps have some, some inbuilt passion as well as the knowledge, uh, maybe about films and, uh, and movies. Uh, and, and, and also showing much more about themselves um, uh, and, and letting their own personality shine through, uh, not only on something like news where they can get really passionate about something, uh, but also on, on, on entertainment uh, and, and perhaps just being a bit amusing and showing much more of their own personality. What I think is really interesting is the, uh, the, the top rated um, uh, bar there and also the bottom rated one as well people not talking so much about business. Is that because business isn't working on, on live streaming video that people or, or, or that people aren't actually trying it so much? Why is small and perhaps large businesses not actually getting the traction that you might expect. You know, we've all seen the uh, the success of some of the uh, uh, experts that we've had on the program before from small businesses uh, selling uh, selling things in, uh, in in this country. We know about the success of people like uh, Chocolate Johnny, of course. Uh, we know of the success of people like Mitch Jackson uh, talking about um, things that they are selling, uh, w whether it be uh, legal information or whether it be um, school bags or whether it be chocolates. All of those people that I've mentioned are going almost worldwide success. Uh, live streaming information, backgrounds, uh, behind the scenes information on what it is they are producing and the kind of expertise and the kind of help that they can give people. That's on the on the business side. So I'm surprised that's not getting a bit more traction. But also, so let's look... to note, Peter, in terms of the research, I think for our viewers is this is not just about live video. It's also about recorded video. And so I, I know there was a comment there in the chat about how interesting and how odd it was about food videos. But I actually don't think that's odd at all, because number one, just look at the number of even celebrity chefs who are actually publishing content specifically on YouTube. I know I subscribe to some of them and they're very regular in terms of their updates. The second thing in terms of the platforms that have been working really well or the, the channels that have been working really well on Facebook, particularly in terms of video, has been such as those short uh, kind of maybe 30 second, 90 second videos that are actually been um, coming up in terms of from it could be even from food bloggers or people that, that you and I know or brands. And if you just take a look at a couple of other pieces of research, and we're going to, as always, have links to the research in the notes um, because um, you'll always get that afterwards from the tubular um, uh, research for Q3. A um, couple of things to note in terms of YouTube and Facebook, um, in terms of the influencers. Influencers dominated both YouTube and Facebook as mega creators, and that's creators with over 100 million lifetime views. So it's no re there's no question about why brands and organizations organizations want to part with it, partner with influencers. So it's not brands who are, who are actually publishing more content. It's not media companies, you know, the likes of news organizations and so on. You might have thought that was what it was. No, it's actually influencers. A couple of other things to note as well on that research in terms of the mega creators on YouTube are producing 42% of the uploads. So, you know, whilst 
Peter and I produce content all the time and we upload this show, we are kind of insignificant compared to the volume of, of uploads that are being, is being done by those mega creators, be that brands, media companies or influencers. Again, influence has been 56% of that share of uploads. Influence has also had more views, 4.2%. Uh, 4.2 times more views than media companies and 33 times more views than brands in quarter three. So again, that's why organizations are working with influencers. Of course, you've got to be compliant with the guidelines with their, whatever country you're in, um, with the Advertising Standards Authority, um, for example, if they're in the UK or in, in Ireland. And um, uh, in terms of food-related views, continuing to grow um, and uh, that's the figure that Peter was talking about before in terms of that 30 percent and in terms of on YouTube 140 percent of growth in terms of um, food related content food related views and I think one of the other reasons for that Peter is the fact that I'm actually seeing um, organizations now even if they're not in the business of food trying to make their content relevant and talk about food because it has become so popular. So if you can, let's say, you know, you've got a business and you can make your story related to food and food recipes and so on, um, I think that really will help you in terms of getting some of that content viewed. Absolutely, and it's interesting. Um, so uh, it, it's Stephen and Kimberly b b both backing up our, our point. Stephen pointing out uh, on the uh, on the comments here: small business has not got live video yet. Absolutely, uh, and, and and forgive me, but you know they, they they need a resource that will show them through step by step about exactly what to do. But yes, the the amount of kind of uh, bricks and mortar mum and dad stores down the high street, individual stores, uh, and and the the advice that they could give the traction they could get whether they're selling a product or a service just really hasn't caught on and I'm not entirely sure what that is I suspect a lot of it is that if you are a small individual privately owned store you just don't have the time because you are running everything from stock control you're running the uh, you're, you're, you're sorting out your accounts it's staff issues and it's the day-to-day -day running as well so the advertising the marketing side uh, which is probably not something that a lot of people are particularly comfortable with, perhaps does go a little bit on the back burner. And uh, Kimberly say, I can understand food being at the top. Personally, most of my television time is spent watching uh, cooking channels versus anything else. Of course, yes, I mean, there are more, I would suggest, more cooking channels on the TV uh, than there are uh, niche channels for, uh, for, for any other topic. And uh, I think a lot of it is, again, going back to what we said about sport, you've got the journey there you've got something developing you've got the education but also you've got literally taking raw ingredients uh, at the at the start of your program uh, whether it be a half hour um, a TV channel program or whether it be just a five minute or whether it be as Krishna was saying those speeded up kind of 30 second videos that we sometimes see uh, you've got the raw ingredients and you're actually making something and you're seeing what it looks like at the end it's a bit like those kind of room or house transformation programs as well but actually far more engaging because it looks better it's different every time it's something that you can do yourself and it is visually uh, engaging it is literally uh, mouth wetting as well which is uh, which is all of those ingredients excuse the pun which comes into it it looks good and you've got that journey and uh also the some screen of here peter in terms of what that we're showing as you're talking about those food videos it's also interesting in terms of the difference between the kind of content that's being created on facebook and who's being created by uh, versus that in terms of on youtube so in fact you've got 70 percent of that food related content is created by food creators people who are dedicated to creating food on facebook um, whereas on youtube it's only 24 percent so there's a lot more people kind of getting into that whole sphere of creating food related content just as i actually were, was talking about before if you can relate your business to food then that's a, a good way to get some interest there's lots and lots of great content, I think, in that research. I know there's other things that we want to get onto. Um, we'll make sure that you have a link to the, the uh, research a little bit later on. But I don't know if this has intrigued you or enticed you, Peter, in your business 
um, in terms of your day job to get more food related content to be created? Well, in, in fact, we do have a, a, a chef in the studio on a Friday, and I'm just thinking, why are we not doing more on that? We're posting pictures of the uh, of the final thing, uh, but we're not actually showing the video of how it actually got there. We're posting the ingredients and the recipes, but we're not actually doing that video. Uh, for me, actually, it's late on a Friday afternoon and I'm not around, so maybe I need to work out exactly how to do that. And also, I think I read in that report um, that there's been a resurgence in Asian food, which is being shown uh, increasingly on video as well. Incidentally, if I can mention the holiday again, and I was looking in lots of uh, lots of cafes and so on, uh, and, and restaurants all around Circular Quay in Sydney Harbour, you've got that iconic design of the Sydney Opera House. And you know what, so many cakes and pastries that were available, none of them made any effort that I could see to make any cake with some kind of of a stylized version of the Sydney Opera House on top of that. And I was just thinking, you know, you only need three or four little triangles of white chocolate and you could uh, identify the Sydney Opera House uh, in cake form. Um, so I um, wonder why no one was doing that, but particularly interesting. And of course, it's something that uh, the, the food videos, which uh, Al Roker and his team there at Brand Live were doing, um, uh, you know, 18 months, two years ago, when the uh, when, when there was that resurgence of uh, of live streaming videos that uh, Al Roker from the United States got on board with, as I say, 18 months, two years ago. OK, Krishna, uh, quite understand. Let's leave it there. We're uh, uh, more than halfway through the programme. So I know there's a few things that you want to pick up with as well. So, Krishna, back over to you. So this is an app that I came across during the course of the week, and I was I always love wherever the apps come from, but I especially give it a little bit more love if it's actually from the UK or Ireland, because obviously that's where a lot of our focus is in terms of the people that we work with and the people that we reach. And I think this could be interesting for all of us to have a look at. And I'm going to tell you about an exclusive offer that was generously given um, to anybody who's watching live streaming insiders. And I'll tell you how you're going to be able to get access to this. What intrigued me about this app, which is actually called um, Yak. You'll find it's a great, great name, yak.net. As they say um, over here, you know, stop yakking as in stop talking or you yak a lot. And so it's kind of a pretty good name. And yak.net, they're based in the UK. But this is an app that works on desktop and on mobile. It works on iOS specifically for mobile at the minute. Android is coming. It works on PC and Mac app is actually coming as well. And what you can do is you can connect and this is, I think, really good for productivity. You know, all live video content does not have to be broadcast to the world. I do a lot of live video content um, actually privately with clients or um, with organizations I'm a member of and so on. And what I really like about this app is that when you're speaking or and you're in a meeting um, or in terms of if you're doing video, then you actually will have a transcript. So it automatically transcribes what people are saying so from a productivity perspective yes of course you're going to need to go back through like you do if you're using youtube or facebook um auto captions you need to go through and edit it but i think it's a great way to get started in terms of that transcript the other thing you can do in the app is you can um, use instant messenger you can also share content as well now this is a paid for tool normally you get seven days access to the tool but in this particular case what they've said to me is that if anybody um, wants to, you can have access to it to the end of 2017 for free. So that's going to give you a good, as we're here now, um, just still in the first quarter, first third, I should say, of uh, of November. It'll give you a, a good seven weeks or so in terms of being able to put this tool to the test. And in fact, even if just one of you in your organization signs up to be able to use it, Anybody else who joins you in that meeting will be able to also access the, that transcript if you, you know, as, as, as it's enabled. So I do think in terms of live video does not have to be done in terms of always publicly. Live audio, one of the people that we had on during the time that Peter was away on vacation, we talked 
or exclusively about live audio for that episode of Live Stream Insiders. And we've talked about that a few times as well. And I just think this is really, really interesting. So if you head on over to yak.net and you actually look to create an account there, just message them, send them a message through their support area, tell them that you heard about them on Live Stream Insiders and you will get access to um, be able to use the platform until the end of the year. Now, if you do have a problem with that, if they can't remember that they committed to that, then obviously message us here at Livestream Insiders. But I think that was very generous of them to do so. As I said, it's usually a seven day trial. And just because I showed an interest in it, and I said I was actually gonna talk about it on the show, then they've actually made that generous offer. I do think um, it's a great way though to, to be more productive in terms of with meetings. You know, in the in the past, in my day, you know, used to have somebody who would have kind of captured notes. And one of the biggest problems with meetings is, do you ever get around to actually somebody creating meeting notes or action points from it? I don't know about you, Peter, if you've ever been in meetings, but it's a real pain if you've been asked to be the secretary of that meeting to have to capture it. I think this is a, a great way to actually start to um, put some some more processes into there and automating that content. So that's yak.net, head on over and uh, tell them that you found it here. We don't get paid to tell them to tell you about it. We're not getting anything in return. It was just a generous offer from them to, for you to be able to access to the end of the year. Absolutely. And uh, all of this information is coming to you free. Uh, we're not pushing any particular product or service or company or website or anything like that. We just want to help you get more out of live video streaming uh, and also live audio streaming, as Krishna was saying there. And sometimes expand that a little bit more into the professional streaming channels, uh, which are being set up by uh, by companies with with multi-camera angles and that kind of thing as well so it's the hints and the, it's the hints and the tips and the tools and the techniques the strategies the logistics the workflows all sorts of different things that we bring you this time every single week we're into our third year now so i would suggest we're probably the longest running regular program on uh, uh, about live streaming but on any live streaming channel so stick with us uh, we are the people in the know krishna Day. I'm Peter Stewart. Thank you for watching as well. Maria, not seen your name before, so thank you very much indeed for coming into our programme this week as well. Um, something which uh, kind of reflects on what we were talking about with the tubular uh, quarter three report of the state of online video, uh, and that is a new push by YouTube um, to get more people to create content for YouTube rather than uh, just merely watch. It's uh, a bit of a marketing push by that. You may be thinking, hold on, do they actually need more content? Do they need more people to create? Uh, well, actually, they reckon they do. And uh, it's a marketing push. And also they've created a, a small film as well. Um, which is a digital video with uh, uh, 90, 30, 15 and uh, six second formats, which they're uh, pushing. And it's called more than just viewers. It's to get more creators. And what they're particularly wanting more people to be uh, to be putting up on YouTube is uh, some more kind of um, specific and some niche content. Yes, the cat videos. Yes, the fun stuff that your kids might do or say. Yes, I'm sure they won't mind to get some kind of uh, uh, equivalent of uh, what Facebook had with the Chewbacca mums and things like that as well and the exploding watermelons but but particularly and as I say this goes back to our, our, our lead item um, subjects which they're particularly interested for people to create content for education and entertainment uh, also workouts and music lessons so people actually learning stuff perhaps in long form video or a series of videos uh, also, parenting classes, so not just funny things that your kids might say. Uh, also, things like gardening and, would you believe, the C word, cooking as well, comes into what they want people to create more of for YouTube as well. So I think they're kind of uh, wanting people to perhaps go a little bit more, a little bit more down the kind of the serious, the education uh, line, but also perhaps I can see a bit of a hint there. Perhaps we want a bit more of a, some more series rather than one off kind of ad lib ad hoc shows as well. And they also bring us the uh, perhaps unsurprising stat in this particular article on the drum.com that uh, 70%, 70, 70% 70 of YouTube views 
are on mobile. You know what? I'm surprised it's not more than that. The 70% of YouTube views on mobile. I used YouTube just yesterday. I needed to reset the boiler for the winter weather. I needed to repressurize it. Couldn't remember how to do it from last year. What did I do? Go onto YouTube and I saw a very helpful chap uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the makers of the boiler that showed me exactly how to do it. And you know what? The boiler hasn't blown up yet. And I am now nice and snuggly warm as the temperature drops to freezing point in London town tonight. So uh, that was my most recent time of using YouTube over the last uh, last 24 hours. Uh, from London, back to uh, back to Ireland. And uh, Krishna Day has more. So, Peter, for our last story, I'm going to be talking about something that I haven't yet had the opportunity to try. Perhaps you have. I keep asking people, have they got this next tool, but they don't. But before I do that, some of you might know that actually my daughters are all great swimmers. And though a little story there about using YouTube reminded me of a few years back of somebody who I know who was looking to train to actually do a triathlon and they couldn't swim. And his name is Steve. And uh, I remember him telling me, because I was teaching a session on terms of video, and this is many, many years ago. And he told me that he'd actually learned to actually swim by watching YouTube videos. Now, I don't think he had his laptop or his you know, tablet or his phone next to the swimming pool. But that's actually how he taught himself to swim, to participate in a triathlon. And don't forget also that YouTube is fantastic in terms of the search, in terms of being found. That's also still important to us. So the last thing that we want to bring you today in terms of as a, a, a piece of news, unless uh, Peter has other things that he wants to actually share with you. I think he's got one other thing that he wants to talk about. But as a piece of news, um, I just want to share with you here. Some, this is a, something that I haven't yet had time to, to try, had the opportunity to try, not even the time. Um, and do let us know if you tested this out, because I haven't seen too many people in my network doing so. And this is Oculus. I would love to get my hands on this. I've seen a few people play around with it, but this is Oculus. And we've talked about this a couple of times during the course of um, the, this year, in fact. And back uh, earlier on this year that um, they added Facebook live streaming um, to Gear VR. Um, and that allows players to kind of share their gaming experiences. And gaming, as we know, is really huge in terms of in, in the live area. Um, and now the company is actually taking it one stage further. So what you're seeing in the image here is a screenshot that I took from a video where actually it was somebody who was, or people who are commenting. So you know as well as I do, and everybody's been great in terms of leaving their comments and feedback and chatting in the, in the uh, comments area here on uh, this live stream on Facebook. Of course, if you're watching the replay and it's elsewhere on YouTube, you can still comment and, you know, you won't be as as, as uh, real time, but we'll still respond to your comments if you're watching the replay. But what's interesting here is what they've done here in, in terms of Oculus is they've got a number of new features, but the thing that attracted me to this story is about the fact that people can leave live stream comments. So you can imagine, in fact, I'm sure you've seen that on Twitch and we've talked about Twitch and we had a really great case study earlier this year about a guy from the UK who's actually got a full-time career in terms of live streaming on Twitch and doing games gaming on Twitch um, and he got sponsors as well. But this is actually really interesting in terms of being able to put comments then into um, into Oculus as well. So that means that if a viewer's got a specific question or perhaps they just want to say well done or go for it or commiserate if somebody can't do something um, in terms of when they're, when they're doing that, then um, you can actually comment and then it's going to be easy for the, the streamer to be able to respond to it. So do let us know in the comments, have you had a, an opportunity to try Gear VR and Oculus yet? I certainly haven't. I'd love to be able to do so. Um, and uh, I'm also, again, something else that we've talked about here on Livestream Insiders is the fact that uh, there's been lots of opportunities for us to actually perhaps explore VR more and more. I'm getting a lot more augmented reality um, news coming up these days. And of course, I think with the latest iPhone, we're going to see more and more of that because people being able to have apps inexpensively on their phones. If you've got a, an iPhone 6S and above, then there's lots of uh, augmented reality apps that are available um, free and things to experiment with, really some exciting things to do, be it everything from measurements through to you've seen probably the likes of IKEA who've been able to um, put their, you know, put their furniture in your environment. Um, and it's been used for lots of things. So it's becoming more and more accessible. 
Um, but you have to have more than a, an iPhone 6 to be able to have access to that. So Peter, over to you for the last piece of uh, stories that you want to pick up in terms of the show. Um, and again, thanks everybody for watching and, and joining us here live in terms of uh, the comments that you've got. Um, let's just see, I think, um, um, oh, there's a question here. So a couple of questions. So let's address these first then, Peter. Um, first, the comment from Patricia saying, when she was in Chicago, she always checked across uh, in terms of the access to channels before the commercial ones. She also also liked prefer watching uh, regular folks versus actors. So I think that goes back to the story that we had a little bit earlier on in terms of the, the different channels that were actually being um, viewed and and, uh, and watched from that story. Uh, and Bobo has said, um, have we got Facebook Live yet? Um, if I've got YouTube pages. Yeah, Bobo, I've had Facebook Live for a long time now, I have YouTube to say, in terms of directly from mobile, if that's what you're thinking about. So if you think about actually being able to stream directly from mobile um, to Facebook, to uh, YouTube Live, um, I've had that for many, many months. I know that some people have had problems. Um, and I think that one stage there was certainly a certain number of people that you had to have on your account to be able to have access to it. Uh, but no, I've got that. And, I, and he's saying he only has access to it to one of his channels. So just make sure that your channel is in good standing. I think Bobo and um, I don't know if they've got still a, a minimum number of um, requirements in terms of subscribers to your channel. Um, to be able to do that and maybe also just enable it for monetization that might be another thing that actually obviously you need to do to make sure that you've got access to live on there so if you've done all those things behind the scenes hopefully it won't be too long till you get it but thanks Patricia and Bobo for your comments and uh, and questions there and let's just see if there's anything else here that's come up um yeah, you, yeah, Bobo, I was actually talking about YouTube. So YouTube, if you were talking about YouTube live from mobile, yes, I do have access to that um, on my channel. So, okay, and let's see. Um, oh, okay, so uh, Cheval is asking, um, what are your thoughts on Dolby Voice integrating into Blue Jeans network? Yeah, Cheval, I know that you're a Blue Jeans user. Um, uh, I think it's a great... Um, you know, innovation. They continue to innovate uh, personally because we use it mainly for what we're doing here. I don't know if you've got a thought on this, Peter, in terms of uh, meetings that you, I, I certainly use it for um, Blue Jeans for meetings, but also use it for Facebook Live. Um, there's some other features I'd love to see them having um, from a from a, a basic Facebook Live integration. Um, I'd love to see some of those other things happening um, in advance to um, perhaps accelerate that. Um, they've had lots and lots of updates this year, but they haven't necessarily hit the mark in terms of everything that I'd love to see in terms of here as a, a live stream. I'd love to have things like comments coming in. That would make it so much easier um, for us versus me having to look at my phone to watch comments. Um, and also lower thirds would be great. We love blue jeans. We've been using it for more than a year now for our shows, and I use it also for private meetings as well. Um, but, yeah, Dolby Voice is is a great innovation. Um, I say I'd love to see some other things for those of us who are using it for live streaming as well. Um, Peter, over to you. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, um, there was one more thing I was going to bring you, but uh, part of our philosophy here on uh, live stream insiders is we like to keep the uh, the program to around about 30 minutes because then you know where you are, we know where we are as well. And uh, we can, you can uh, manage your minutes and manage your megs, uh, your time and your data. Uh, so we'll hold that other thing that I was going to be talking about, about uh, doing live um, uh, video uh, with uh, bearing in mind something for the edit. So something that you can uh, record live that you can repackage later. It sounds a bit of a difficult concept, doesn't it? And something else to think about while you're doing a live stream. So we'll leave that over uh, for next week. So that concludes live stream insiders for uh, for this particular week. Thank you again so much for watching. Uh, all of the information, all of the notes, the stuff that we've been talking about, the facts and the stats, and all of the links to all of the articles that we've mentioned are all available, of course, as usual, uh, in the next hour or so uh, straight after the show. And we will be back at the same time next Sunday uh, with more live streaming uh, up 
updates from uh, uh, the various news articles that we've been scanning and reading, uh, some tech advice and all sorts of other things, uh, maybe some uh, some changes to some of the apps, maybe apps which have closed down, maybe apps which have uh, come in, or maybe apps which have been sold on. All of the information for live video news you can use delivered in 30 minutes or thereabouts. It is live stream insiders. I think we're pretty safe to say that this is the longest running continuous program about live streaming on a live streaming channel. With Krishna Day, I'm Peter Stewart. We are Live Stream Insiders. Have a great week.